Non-compete highlights. July 31st, 2020. Begin transmission. So, okay, ACAB now. Child labor in Vietnam, over 1.75 million Vietnamese children. 9.6% of the population of people under 18 in the country are laborers. Child labor in Vietnam consists wow. of children who are forced to work long hours, normally with little to no pay, in crowded factories or on agricultural farms. Wow. They're saying 10% of the children in of the children in Vietnam are laborers. Wow. You want to handle that one, Luna? I have a f***ing nothing to tell because, like, no I'd sources. I'd love to see the source for that. The source is the Borgen Project. The Borgen Project board of directions are congressmen and former heads of Boost Mobile. That sounds like non-biased people. Always follow the money and always look at the people who are involved at the top. Always. You'll always find that there's some kind of propagandistic situation going on 90% of the time. These neoliberal NGOs and shit, they don't care about people. Mm. They don't. They just don't. Like Human Rights Watch, I'm sorry. They've done good work with like, with like some of the things pointing out the corruption in Thailand with the king and the general and that sort of mm. stuff. That's where I learned a lot of that stuff. And it, but I follow the I follow the fucking paper trail. You know what I mean? Mm. You can't just read the stuff and then just believe it's true. You have to click the sources. You gotta. You have to do work. And find who fund them. You have to do the work. Someone once asked me uh, on Twitter, like, because I I wrote a thing about how you can't trust. Reuters, because they do, like, they just publish CIA shit all the time. I'm like, oh, well, if everything's CIA propaganda, then what news source do you trust? And I'm like, Noth none. I don't trust any of them. Mm. You know, like, I, you got to do the work. You have to. It's, it, unfortunately, the way that things work right now with the way that we have these neoliberal institutions, capitalist media and all this stuff, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust other bread tubers even because there's so many lies. There's so much, in a, uh, there's so much agenda you can't just trust the news sources. This is uh, from the International <sighs> Labor headache, Organization, headache. which I guess is the United <sighs> Nations. 9.6% of children aged 5 to 17 in Vietnam are child laborers, showing the main findings, blah, blah, blah. There are 1.75 million Vietnamese children, with two in every five of them under 15, working in situations that fit the definition of child labor adopted for this report. That is, work undertaken by children below the appropriate legal minimum working age set by Vietnam's national laws. Okay, so see, they said right there that a lot of this is illegal already. It's against the law in Vietnam, okay? So, f***ing, yeah, I know that there is, like, illegal shit happening in Vietnam, obviously. But that doesn't mean that, like, it's because of socialism. The government actually made it against the law, and if they get caught, they will get in trouble for doing it. And, okay, let's keep going. Most child laborers live in the countryside, work in agriculture, and are unpaid family workers. Now, what thousands... does it mean by child labor? Because like when I was in middle school, and I came to work in the rice farm with my mom, and I feel happy for that. What the? F I know, and it just says it? it just says eight, uh, nine point six percent of the population under eighteen are laborers. Like I would say that like twenty percent of the people that I went to high school with had jobs when they were like sixteen, seventeen. Ah. Uh... Would, could I say that like twenty percent of the people in my high school were laborers? Ah, uh, you know they were working labor at, like, or something. I mean, I'd, I'd love to know what you mean, because yeah, I mean, like sometimes you'll see like like a kid working on like a fishing boat here in Da Nang, you know, mm. like like with their family after with his school. With his dad, what's wrong with that? Like, they get out of school and they'll go onto the fishing boat or whatever. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of any time I've seen children working. Um, I saw like a lot of children like uh, bring their cows, families' cows to the. Rice farm, so so the cows yeah, can eat. To help on the farm. And that's late. Is that like, like child I labor? Did. I worked on like a horse farm when I was in middle school. Look at this. And again, <laughs> like when, when I was a kid, like my mom would work on the rice field, right? And then uh, she she didn't go back home for lunch. I had to go home and then cook lunch and then brought lunch to the farm for her. And then like stay with her and help her with like I'm picking up some uh, grass on the rice field. So. Do you, so you know the funny thing that. is actually yeah that's how the you know how the the horse people might not know this if you're not familiar but like when I was a kid I would do riding lessons and like to get them for free I would like muck out barns and stuff like that oh uh -huh. so I'd, I'd spend like three or four hours a week like cleaning up horse shit and stuff like that and um, so yeah I was a laborer for a horse farm I guess you could say I um, I delivered baskets for my mom when I was like mm -hmm. 16 17. Uh, I did a lot of work when I was a kid, so I mean, this is like you could take you could take any numbers and you could and you could make it look really shitty. Today, just over one third, or thirty five percent, of teens between the ages of sixteen and nineteen are part of the workforce. Thirty five percent of teenagers in the USA are laborers. Oh gosh, it's just a third. Oh wow, <laughs> it's incredible. so low. It's incredible. At least in Vietnam, it's a tens, you know. 
Oh. I've never seen a kid working in a factory in Vietnam or heard of that happening. So my but, gosh, if the factory take the under 18 year old kids in Vietnam, they think they're gonna close their whole business. It's against the okay, law. Against the law. There are kids that work in sweatshops in the USA, by the way. You know, and it's illegal. But, and, and I'm sure that there are sweatshops in Vietnam. I'm sure that it happens, right? But they're illegal. They're f***ing illegal. Yeah. And, and you know what? I'll be perfectly honest too. I have seen kids um, kind of exploited in like big cities in like Saigon and Hanoi in Vietnam where like they're they're like selling candy and stuff like that on the side of the street and from what i understand those are gangsters that are forcing them to do that mm. but that's against the law mm. you know what i mean and it's like hard to kind of enforce but it is against the law and if those gangsters every so often in the newspaper it'll they'll get caught and they go to prison and stuff like that it's so fucking hypocrite those yeah i mean that i don't think that they actually care about the kids in vietnam that's because uh, the there are things that happen of course there there's like if sex... they do care about the kids please send us some money as a compensation for the asian <laughs> army that the usa did like drop to us like and kill like even the fourth generation of vietnamese children can do something about that yeah i mean like here's the thing there are definitely kids that get exploited in Vietnam. I'm not going to pretend Vietnam's perfect and, like, no kids. Yeah. Like, there are sex trafficking victims in Vietnam. I mean, like, bad shit happens in Vietnam to kids, of course. Right? Bad stuff happens to kids everywhere. But it's like, it is against the law, and the government is trying to stop it as much as anywhere else. It's a poor country, mm. and it's harder to enforce a lot of this stuff. And a lot of that is because, like Luna was saying, the Agent Orange, the bombings, and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, if you really care about this shit, maybe what you should do is, like, uh, support socialist countries that are f***ed over by the rest of the world with things like mm. embargoes and all kinds of exploitative financial warfare. The thing that really disgusts me about this kind of rhetoric is that the people don't care about the kids. They're just making, they're doing this rhetoric because they want to make socialism look bad. I'll tell you what makes me pissed off is that in the USA, they're about to open up the f***ing schools when they're yes. having a thousand deaths do per you day care? for the kids. Do, do they, those In Vietnam, cares about they that? shut down the schools immediately when COVID-19 <laughs> cropped up. Immediately, they shut down the schools and they were closed for months. And I Three know weeks e earlier than the earliest country, cap capitalist country like such as Japan or South Korea. Yeah. Three weeks earlier, and so they, you say nothing about that. So don't act like you give a shit about the children, okay? Don't come in here and act like you care about these kids. If you care about the kids, you would want more socialism because you wouldn't want kids going hungry in the USA, where before COVID 19, one in seven people in the USA, man, woman, child, non binary, everybody was. Uh, relying on food banks, okay? Before COVID-19, 60 times more people died of malnutrition, Can you believe children, that? than in Vietnam. Times. 60 times more US Americans die of malnutrition than Vietnam before COVID-19. Two times more Americans die of COVID-19 than Cuba before COVID-19. If you want children to have good lives, guess what? You need socialism. The people who ended child labor originally were union workers, organized labor. They were the people that were pushing to stop child labor. It was socialists. It was leftists. It was anarchists. It was communists. These are the people that ended child labor in the USA. And the people who are fighting against opening up the schools right now, the hardest, are socialists. Okay? Because it's not time to open schools up. It's not time to open Disney up and send kids to die at Disney World so that and Mickey Mouse can make billions more dollars in profit. And, and yeah, you want to talk about like kids getting like suffering. Look at the Native American reservations. Look at the kids there. They don't have running water. They don't have fucking food. They don't have Look anything. Look at all the kids I got separated from my, separated from my, their children in this concentration camps. Look at Silver Spook, who was a homeless indigenous Hawaiian teacher. Yes. And, and, and was teaching kids who were all on the brink of, of, you know, social collapse. So... Don't talk to me like I I'm going to I'm not saying that, that Vietnam is perfect. OK, Vietnam has plenty of problems. OK, but like don't come in here and act like you give a shit about the kids when all you're trying to do is make your anti-socialist propaganda when you don't even give a shit about the kids in your home country. <laughs> I was working 16 in a basement cinema. Uh, Mad Hat says mm. millions of eviction of evictions near the horizon. It's looking bleak. And a lot of those are going to be kids thrown out in the streets. Uh, my teacher friends desperately don't want to open up because they care about the kids the most. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't open the school, Jesus. I, so I just want to know where people get off, where they come We got in. just got one new case in three months, and immediately one day after that, the government announced that all the class like should reduce all the class and then try to like have more online class again. In Vietnam, there's this one place called uh, Halong Bay. Hollong Bay is a very beautiful, beautiful place. 
and they have these uh, fishing families that live there. I don't know how to describe Hawaii Bay. It's like Lord of the Rings world. <laughs> okay, it's like the most beautiful place in the world. They have these like giant, I'll show a picture. All right, so this is Halong Bay, if you've never seen it. It's freaking gorgeous. It's so beautiful. This picture doesn't even do it justice, actually. Yeah. It's way more beautiful than this. Mm. Um, so in Halong Bay, they have these fishing uh, villages, okay? They have these fishing villages. Beautiful places, right? Happy people. They work on these boats. They go out and they fish. They're happy people, okay? Now, I, I'll tell you, I actually think that the kids need to go to school, personally. Now, these fishing people... Okay, in Halong Bay, they were not sending their kids to school and they were going out on their boats with the kids and they were living on these houseboats. That's the way that the families wanted things to be, right? The government came in and specifically because they wanted the children to go to school, forced all these families to move to the land mm, yes. and they built a school for the kids to go to. The families who got these free houses, by the way, free houses and free land Schools. to live on yeah. and a free school built for them. The families snuck away and like went back to their houseboats. Yes. Because they preferred living that way. Yes. Now this is where it gets to me complicated. Okay? Because these are people, they've been living like this for who knows how long. Hundreds of hundreds years. Hundreds of years. Maybe thousands. We don't even know. But mm. a long, long, long time. This is the lifestyle these people have had mm. in Holland Bay. Mm. Now, I don't know. I mean, like, this for me is where I get conflicted. Like who who am I as an American asshole that I don't know shit about their culture or, the, mm. or their way of life? Who am I to come in and say, you should do this. they you need should to live that. this way or they need to live that way? Now, the government in Vietnam doing it, I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad. I have no f***ing clue. But I can actually, that's a situation where it's way more complicated. But if you just saw the numbers, like say there's a thousand kids in that village, right? Mm. If you just saw the numbers, it would say, oh, a thousand people in this village in Vietnam are child laborers, Yeah. right? But it's actually not really that simple, actually. I don't actually know which side I'm on. Yeah. I really don't. I don't know. Like, I think that every child should go to school, but also, if you got people who've been living this way for hundreds of years, like, what's the right answer? I don't know. There's no right answer. Know. The same thing happened with them making of the villages in the North Mountain of Vietnam. Build a school boat. <laughs> Best answer. So simple. Why didn't the government think of that? School boat. <laughs> the point of the matter is the Vietnam socialist government was like demanding that they put their kids in school. You know, in the north of Mother Vietnam, the government, the local government and the teachers had to go walk to the jungle, go to the big mountain and beg the families to send their kids to the schools. Yeah. We had to beg them to send the kids to the school. So the so the way that these NGOs present it is like, look how bad socialism is. Look at all these child laborers. But really, it's a cultural thing in Vietnam. Yes. That goes back a long, long, long time in the culture. These are the families that are having their kids work on their farms and work on their fishing boats. I mean, that's like, it wasn't that long ago in the USA when it was the same, where a farmer would have like 20 kids <laughs> because they want farm labor. That was the, that's like, that's always the traditional like agricultural way of getting labor is like you have a bunch of kids, mm -hmm. right? Am I mm -hmm. wrong? That's all, that's the way it's always been everywhere in agricultural societies. Hey, show off your show vest. Off. Why not? Look all at right. that. This is a custom vest. I got this vest. It's like, it was like 20 bucks. It was actually oh. cheaper. It's cheaper to get a tailor-made vest in Hoi An because of all the child labor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> When people come in and they say, oh, 10% of the kids of Vietnam are child labor, socialism sucks. It's like, you're coming in here because you want to shit on socialism. You don't have any interest in actually learning what we believe. Mm. You don't have any interest in actually discovering why some of these things happen, why there might be a lot of child laborers in Vietnam. Maybe it's not because of socialism. Maybe it's because of the culture. Maybe it's a problem that uh, socialism could solve. Yes. Which is what the government has been trying to do, is build free schools for these kids and give them free houses. Do you get what I'm saying? What's mm. the capitalist solution? What's the f***ing capitalist solution You're to, right. to, what's to the f fishing village, uh, you know, in Halong Bay? Build a f***ing factory there? <laughs> yeah, they want to build a factory there, and then they can make all the fishermen build, work in the factory, and uh, then the kids can go to the school and learn about how America's... Uh, the best country in the world. Like, that's uh, what's the capital solution to this situation? I think that the kids should go to school and they should find some way to compromise with these families to where, like, everyone's happy. I don't know how you do it without being, like, colonial and, like, I don't know. I have no fuck. I don't even know. I don't want to pretend I have all the answers here. I don't. 
But I will say that when an NGO says that 10% of the people are working, they are not mentioning these kinds of cases where you have the freaking houseboat people who don't want to put their kids in school. And what do you do about that? <laughs> what do you really do about that? Like, there's not an easy answer to that. It's not because of socialism, though. Кассетный миниатюрный магнитофон. Subscribe for more.